Okay, so a real common cut that we need to make is the hole that we need to make in the tile for the shower head that's coming out of the wall. I get this question a lot, so I figured I'd make a video on it. If you're a DIYer, don't be afraid of this because we have this nice escutcheon usually on the shower arms that's quite a bit bigger than the hole that we need to make. So if you don't have a hole saw and all you have is your grinder or a tile saw that you're using, I can show you how to do it without a hole saw like this. I've already made a few videos on how to cut tile with a hole saw. It's how I would make it on a job site, but oftentimes if you don't have this hole saw, it's easy to do with either your grinder or a wet saw. Now the tools that you're gonna need to have are a speed square, a hammer and a chisel would be nice. This is a wood chisel, but I've turned it into a tile chisel. And of course, either a four inch grinder, like this one, this has a four and a half inch diamond wheel on it. This is a Makita with a pearl P4 blade on it. And I have a seven inch tile saw. I love my little seven inch tile saws because they're really light. And if you're a DIYer, they're much more affordable and you can do almost everything that a big 10 inch saw can do. Maybe just not as fast. So let's get started. Okay, the first thing we need to do is make the mark where the drop ear is coming out of the wall, and this is what the shower head connects to, right? You got the shower arm and it just screws right into this half inch drop ear, that's our typical setup. So wherever this is coming out of the wall, we take our measurement and then we transfer it onto our tile. So I'm just gonna take an arbitrary measurement, I'm gonna go six inches here, and five and three quarters here. Again, this is arbitrary. It's gonna depend, again, on wherever this is coming out in the wall. What I like to do is give myself a nice line with my speed square. So now that I got my mark, I'm gonna make a square that's one inch by one inch because this guy here is three quarters. And again, we have some wiggle room, so I'm gonna give myself an inch that's also gonna allow us to overcut a little bit if we accidentally do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and transfer half inch on either side to give myself a one inch square. Next thing I'm gonna do is make my marks and I'm gonna transfer these marks to the side of the tile as well. I'll show you why I'm going to do that in a second, but basically I'm going to be transferring this mark to the back of the tile. Again, these speed squares are really handy. They're going to make it a lot easier. So you can see I've transferred the line to the other side. So now that I have the marks on the edge of the tile, I can transfer them onto the back. I'm going to do that, do that on both marks that I have. Now I'm going to switch to a Sharpie because it's going to show up a little better on this textured tile. So now what I have is I have the same square marked here as on the front of the tile. That's in the exact same place. It's pretty obvious, since this is a circular wheel, we're gonna have to make a bigger cut on the back to transfer it through to the front. So I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting, and I'm just gonna cut a little bit past the line. I'm gonna try to stay evenly spaced on either side of the line. Obviously, I don't wanna cut way down here or up here. I'm just gonna cut straight down through this. Put my earplugs in. Okay, so what I did is I just cut down just enough to where I could see the blade come through and I can see down through here that the blade has come through the front. Once I saw that, I stopped what I was doing, and now you can see I have it coming through the front. 
And so I'm just gonna do this for the other three sides. And you can see I kept checking as I went. Uh, you, I kept pulling the blade out so I could look down in there and see, because look, it, it came through on the front. Now this is okay, if it's, it's not through very much, you can see I'm only, I'm only about halfway through there, that's okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop right there and make my other cuts. So you can see here, I've made my cuts on the back and they've come through the front. And even though they're not all the way through on the front, that's okay. I just, I really don't want to go past. If I go past a little bit, it's okay. But really you don't have much room. Once you see it start to come through on the front, you need to stop. Now that I have that, I can just take my chisel and just pop it just like that. And that little guy's going to come out. And again, I have a, a, a few little uh, tidbits on the side, which could be cleaned up with the chisel. And we have the cut we need. So we got plenty of wiggle room in here. We got plenty of wiggle room. This is gonna come in here. And again, our escutcheon is gonna cover wherever it needs to go. We have that nice, beautiful cut. So it doesn't have to be a circle. It doesn't have to be pretty. That's all you need. Now what if you only have a wet saw and not a grinder? Well that's okay. I'm going to show you how to do it on a wet saw. So all you need to do is do the exact same marks on the front and back that we did with the grinder cut. So let's go over the tile saw and let's make this cut. Now what I have here is a little Ruby 7 inch tile saw. Again, I really like the 7 inch saws. Rigid has a nice one. Uh, to me, they're really versatile, lightweight, easy to move around, and making small cuts like this is a little bit easier. So I'm just gonna move, move the tray out of the way, and I'm gonna use this wheel pretty much the same as how I used the, the grinder. But what I'm gonna do differently here is I'm actually gonna be using my finger on the back to feel for when that blade pops through. Because it's, it's really hard to see and feel um, without that. I just, don't, I just don't wanna go too far. So I'm gonna be using my finger underneath. And don't worry, this blade, if it's wet, <laughs> it's not gonna hurt you. And you can touch it with your finger. Okay, so you can see I went a little too far here. It's, it's really tricky. Even though I was, I was feeling for that, my finger must have been just a little bit off because I didn't feel it come right through. Uh, I got three sides really good, but this last one, I kind of goofed up. So let's see uh, if this still covers. It might still cover. That because we have quite a bit of play in this escutcheon, that it's still gonna work it's still gonna completely cover. So 
that's how much wiggle room we have. <laughs> now, all of these escutcheons might not be this generous. If they were a little bit smaller, I would have uh, burned up this whole tile and had to make a new one. But you can see it can be done on a wet saw. Okay, so you can see both of these methods worked, both the wet saw and the four and a half inch grinder. Uh, but obviously this four and a half inch grinder, I was able to be a lot more accurate and it looks nicer. Even though no one's never gonna see it because this is covering it up, you know, it looks nicer. So if you don't have one of these four and a half inch Makitas, I highly suggest get one. Even if you're not doing tile all the time, you can put a cutoff wheel on it to cut metal and stuff like that, do some grinding. But this is a really, really nice tool to have when you're doing tile. I would say the main things you need to get started if you're doing tile, you need a tile saw, like maybe that seven inch saw, you need a four and a half inch grinder, you need a drill to mix your thin set, and then obviously the small hand tools, uh, trowels, notch trowels, margin trowels, and stuff like that. But this grinder is part of the arsenal that will really help you out. So there you have it. If you like this video, maybe go to tilecoach.com and check out some of the merchandise we have by you going there and purchasing items. It helps me make these videos. I'm not sponsored by any manufacturers. So if you wanna show some love, go over to tilecoach.com and get one of these metal t-shirts or have a few other items on there as well, hats and a couple other shirts. And before I go, it's Christmas time. I'd like to leave you with uh, maybe a message of gratitude. I am so grateful and thankful for all of you who watch my videos. My cup is overfilling with gratitude. And that's not too easy to say in these times. I know the last year and a half, two years has been really difficult um, with the lockdown, no matter what side you're on. If it's been divisive, it's hard. We've lost a lot of faith and hope in humanity. And if you're struggling right now, that's probably normal. Don't be too hard on yourself. If you haven't been as productive at work, if you haven't, you know, maybe you're a DIYer and your, your bathroom's been sitting like this for six months and you're struggling and just can't find the energy and motivation, hang in there, man. Everybody's kind of in the same boat. I'm struggling with some of that stuff too. So just know that we're all in the same boat. If we can kind of just unify, give each other a little bit of grace, know that not everybody's at their best and just try to be a positive influence in whatever small way you can. And again, I'm so grateful for you watching these videos, and I love you, I love being your tile coach, and we'll see you on the next video.